pitch a tent right there. Build a campfire over here and just camp out. This, this is like a campground that we've moved on to. It's incredible. What's that, Jojo? Well, hey everyone, Wayne here with Sparks Family Homestead. And guess what? This is my first sitting down and uh, sort of in the forest part of our property here. I have the camera facing our, our brand new home. We don't have the keys yet uh, to go inside. Uh, they are still uh, dealing with, uh, tr uh, the trenching has been done uh, basically for the, the pump well as well as for the electric uh, connection from the uh, county road uh, out to our home right right back there so this is sort of relaxing i've never done this before in fact i subscribe to several different uh, homesteading youtube channels and i see people doing with what i'm doing right now and now i know why <laughs> it is uh, very relaxing and it is just breathtaking i cannot tell you just how much I am so excited uh, to be here uh, permanently. And so what we're looking at today is September 23. And um, I actually went to our storage. We have a storage, we have three storage uh, units. One's like a 10 by 20 and the other two are 10 by 10s. Basically that's housing our entire house array, uh, as well as Mark and Kayla's uh, uh, personal belongings as they will be uh, my son and daughter-in-law and the grandkids will be living with us in this home um, until uh, whenever uh, we're, we're hoping and believing that uh, in the next year or so that they will be able to have their own place and if not well this is a one heck of a beautiful home that we're all going to be living in for the immediate moment uh, for Ida and me forever and ever and for Mark and Kayla uh, as long as uh, they need to be with us that's fine uh, these are trying times that we're living in right now and uh, the politics uh, the inflation uh, the unemployment is massive uh, people are just being laid off in the droves uh, and this is a year before the elections and who knows with what's ever going to happen but anyway I'm not going to get into politics here but but I will say this that uh, with what we are planning to do here on the homestead is to be first of all as much independent from the grid as possible uh, I don't believe we can be totally off the grid but I'm just thinking of this you know just monies um, it has costed us if i could say that correctly um, so much to purchase this uh, it's basically six acres that we have uh, i feel like we're on hundreds of acres being out here in the mountain but uh you know six acres is more than enough for my wife and i uh, we have I have to bushwhack all this growth. Uh, you can't see a whole lot right at the immediate moment, but there's a ton, I mean, a ton of uh, growth here. And, oh, yeah, I don't know if you saw that back there, but a car, a van driving on the county. I'll tell you, the county road that's above our home, and it's very tiny. Seriously, it is very small. I, I drive uh, a Honda uh, Odyssey van, and sometimes when I'm on it, I wonder if the road is wide enough for the all four wheels <laughs> to fit on it. And I see a lot of side-by-sides. I see a lot of uh, Jeep type of vehicles 
on this mountain that we're at here. And now I understand why. We have a waterfall right up the road here. It's, it's hiking distance, but it's sort of steep. And um, so, so anyway, let me go back to what I was uh, sort of trying, trying to say is that with all the things that are going on in, in this nation right now, uh, our, you know, first of all, you know, take, take a look at me. I, it's very evident that I'm like in my 60s, actually in my latter 60s. I don't like to admit that. But, um, and I'm doing this. This is incredible and, and crazy. Um, and we had, I'll, I'll tell you, we had a most beautiful home uh, over here in the Greenville area. Actually, it was Tusculum, and it was in a gorgeous subdivision and my wife and I loved that house and in the last four years with all that we've been seeing going on here I just thought you know what I would uh, number one is you know we're totally re in, in this subdivision we had everything was on the grid so the water was on the grid the electrical was on the grid and well that was pretty much it because our, our that house was full electric and there was, there was no gas to it. And we had no fireplace in the house. So if a catastrophe, if, uh, if the power was uh, cut off or the water was cut off and, and you got, you know, you're in a group of homes of 30 or 40 or 50 homes that so many of us uh, are like, you know, that's pretty norm or you're in an apartment situation or whatever. Uh, you're, I mean, you're at the, the government's thumb you know, they have absolute control. And when I say government, I mean the county or, or the city or, or whoever mandates. I don't even like saying that. But uh, whoever mandates, you know, that this is what you get and you better not complain because that's it. I didn't want to live like that for the rest of my life. And I wanted freedom as much as possible. And... This nation is incredible. We have the Constitution of the United States, which is the supreme law of the land, and um, that is where I stand. Okay, and so I thought, well, is is it's not how old you are, it's it's what you believe is the right thing to do, and I just had this urgency that we needed to get out of that subdivision home as beautiful as it is, and it was paid for. Everything was paid for. You know, the only thing we owed was like once a year property tax and just the utility bills and that was it. No car payments, no nothing. Uh, so when we sold that house and it sold at the end of this last July of 23, so we, we took that amount of money and we, trans we basically transferred it onto this property uh, to pay for the land and I decided to go with a modular type of uh, home and instead of the the typical stick built home and then the way things are going right now it takes it, it could take months if not uh, you know over a year or two years before the home could be completed and that's here in northeastern Tennessee let alone other states uh, across the nation I didn't want to wait that long and knowing that a manufactured home now is no different than a stick built house. They build it with the same HUD standards and it's, uh, it, you would not know it's a, a manufactured house. It's not a mobile home. It is a manufactured home built by the same specifications, wiring, plumbing, two by fours, everything. We even have the a higher pitch roof on this thing. So uh, it's, and it's absolutely beautiful. And, and it's uh, to try to get the same type of house, a stick built house, brand new, you know, maybe on a third of an acre or even not even that much, would here in Tennessee, you're looking at well over 400 to maybe $500,000 for a house that's over 2,000 square feet, okay? So, so I think we did, we did the right thing, it, but it's not been easy. And we, we have been renting, um, and we're, we're in a very old home, 
nothing wrong with the age, but I mean, it's seen its day and it's a roof over our heads, but we're, we're ready to move into this over here. So, so we're thinking this, we're nearing the end of September uh, with the, the well uh, pump and the, and the water tank for the well. The well's already been dug. We went down 465 feet. That is capped. So all of that's been done. And that averaged us about 12 grand just to do, just to go down 4,000. But that, it, the well is not finished yet because we need to install the pump and, and the holding tank and all the electronics and everything and the wiring to get it, to get that connected to the house, to the power system. So the electric company is supposed to be out here on Monday. So we're very anxious to pay them and get this house connected to the grid. I hate to say that, but we need to be on the grid. Um, game plan, of course, is to do something different, i.e. solar. That's, I, I already have a solar power generator and it's uh, Blue Eddy, and I'll go into that at a later video. And, it's, and that is paid for. Uh, but it's not enough to power that whole house. But it's, it's an infant step and that's what you need to do. So what we're doing on this land right now is that um, this has been graded. They had to mow down not too many trees. It was like, actually it was only one tree they had to mow down in order to uh, flatten it out there on the hill and to lay, lay the cement foundation for the pillars and everything. And, uh, and then most recently they just graded a, a 25 by 25 pad for a future uh, garage, I guess, or a small, very small barn-like structure that will be next to the end of the house. And uh, we're very excited about that. They've already uh, laid out gravel and they, it's not finished yet because they trenched from the county road all the way, about four feet down, all the way to the side of the house. And that's where the, the electrician needs to lay the, the wiring and everything under the ground and connect it to the house so we have electric power to the house. Then, the, then they'll finish the total grading. They'll finish uh, with all the gravel and everything. Uh, we're not in a position right at the immediate moment to do a, like a cement slab. Uh, the, I see so many YouTube videos where they just pour the cement and they have the structure going up and all of this. And oftentimes I wonder, where is the money? <laughs> where are they getting all this money? And are they going into debt to do it? You know, or did they borrow money? And hopefully that's not the case, but uh, who knows? And it's not for me to judge, but I'm trying to avoid that is what I'm trying to say. So on our, here at the Sparks Family Homestead, we, uh, my, my son and I will be doing most of the, uh, uh, one of the first projects that we're doing is I bought two uh, 20 pound bags of grass seed be uh, and I'm going to be filming this. I was going to start it today, but I noticed there's a bunch of rocks and, and dead branches all over right next to the house there. And uh, they are anticipating rain by Tuesday, maybe this Monday evening into Tuesday. So if I can uh, whirly bird grass seed around that, that house and stuff, and to get some grass to grow in to uh, prohibit erosion scenario. That is, that is going to be my next project. I thought my very first project was to buy some metal gates because uh, we have two entrances. One is that direction and the other one is behind me above the house there. And above the house, uh, that entrance uh, will require a double gate uh, and all of this I'll be showing on the upcoming videos. And then the going that direction, it's the entrance is a little bit narrower, so we can just do one singular gate. So we'll have two gates. That's not gonna really prohibit anybody from trying to get onto this property or for security reasons, but psychologically, um, they'll know that, hey, somebody lives there and this uh, road, they, they created, uh, the original owner of the property uh, created this gravel road from 
one end of the six acres all the way to the other end of the six acres. And it looks, looks like it belongs to the county. It doesn't. It belongs t to me, to my wife and I, and my son and daughter-in-law. And uh, we actually named it Asher Lane. So it sort of divides the six acres up. So where the house is located is the, the best place to build. Uh, either a, a small barn dominium, another manufactured home or whatever. We went with a modular type of home right behind me there. Um, we actually have at least two other pads that they would have to clear out some trees on here. And I really don't want to see that happen uh, because I love, I love the forest and I love the natural vegetation. And I'm discovering that there are several pawpaw trees on on this now where I am sitting here I'm I can look out this direction and it looks sort of dark because it's heavily vegetated and at, at just multitudes of trees and everything but it leads right out to the uh, year-round flowing stream that we have and I've seen at least maybe two or three pawpaw trees right in this area but when we clear out this, we're gonna, I'm gonna make some hiking trails or walking trails, I guess, going way out down towards the other end of the property and, and out this way, because what we would love to do is to be able to make it like a park-like setting. And, uh, and so I wanna keep all of the natural nature here, but I wanna keep the weeds and, and everything down so it's manageable and uh, and that's just going to be, my son and I, we're just going to just take a little section at a time, and that's what we're going to do uh, until, until this, this place can get cleared out. Now we're entering into fall, or we are in fall, actually. Today's the 23rd, so I think the first day of fall was maybe yesterday, or is it the 21st? I, I can't remember. Anyway, um, so, and they're saying because of El Nino that uh, where we live, they still consider northeastern Tennessee part of the south, but we're at the upper end of the south. But they're talking about uh, like a frigid fall that they're anticipating here. Well, with that, with, you know, freezing temperatures, that's going to kill all the uh, overgrowth and vegetation. So I don't even know if I want to try to mow all of this down at this time, because I, th I think the weather will just sort of like do that for me. <laughs> and a lot of these trees, we have, we have a, a quite a few pine trees here on the property, but we have a tremendous amount of other uh, types of trees, in particular, a lot of oak trees here. And... Um, and it's just breath, it's breathtaking and beautiful, you know, it's just, it just amazes me. Um, we also have a lot of natural wildlife here. Uh, one of the biggest um, things, it's black and it's big, and that's a black bear. And so I'm being told by our neighbors, we've met several of them that are on, uh, we probably are the only family here that has the smallest property. Everybody else has like 20 acres plus. Uh, but anyway, they say that a lot of black bears, you know, walk on this property that I'm sitting on right now. <laughs> I just haven't seen it. And um, so, so that, and I, we've seen wild turkeys. We've, we've seen a lot of deer and the raccoons and the possums and, and there's just, and the, the hawks and the eagles and, Every, you know, it's just, it's, it's just, uh, there's, there's far more than what I just said that's here. Uh, I will say that we've been warned that here in, in uh, Tennessee, there, there are four, four, uh, I believe it was four poisonous snakes. And uh, one of them is a copperhead. The other one, of course, is a rattlesnake. Uh, I haven't seen any on our property as of yet, but I've been warned. Uh, I'm, I'm just uh, dressed with a t-shirt right at the moment and tennis shoes and shorts because it's been in the high 70s, low 80s, so it's very comfortable still to be dressed like this. Uh, but you really want to be wearing like cowboy boots and jeans. 
in this area, uh, I can see why. Because I wouldn't want to go traipsing over towards the creek because it's just heavily with fo foliage and you don't know what's in that foliage. So anyway, in a nutshell, this is what I just wanted to share with everyone. Uh, we are so thrilled and so excited. Um, I will be, uh, I've got several videos that I need to edit uh, that sh have, you know, they've already done a lot of the work that I haven't uploaded yet to show. And uh, it's just, just so much has been going on. It's been crazy. And um, so, so on this sit down talk, uh, I'm just so blessed and our family is blessed. And, it, and I, I have to admit it, it has been stressful, uh, you know, uh, especially if you're married and if you have children and you're trying to do something like this, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of stress. And one of its economics, of course, and the other is just, you know, relationship. And um, if it, I'll tell you, if it, if it wasn't for, for the Lord, you know, for Jesus in our lives, um, I don't know, you know, I, I just would have no idea of uh, how we would survive this latter thing in our lives uh, to actually take place. But anyway, we are here and we're strong, we're very healthy and uh, we're vibrant and we're excited with what's going on here on the homestead. Uh, we will be doing animals here. Uh, probably uh, Kayla wants to do uh, some goats and, uh, and, and I would like to, I actually would like to get back into the, uh, uh, into the poultry aspect of it, like with quail. Uh, and if, if, if any of you have seen my previous videos, uh, we raised quail in the uh, subdivision actually for over two years almost two years excuse me and we uh, were selling our, the eggs uh, to a couple supermarkets uh, in our area and it was pretty exciting uh, but we hardly ever ate any of the quail eggs because we couldn't keep keep up the amount of egg requests because people really uh, loved the tiny tiny little eggs and um, but that was a lot of work and uh, quail are vulnerable to almost any type of predator. So we will do chickens here and uh, we, were, we will create first the infrastructure for any type of goat or chicken on the homestead here. That has not been done yet and it's only in the thought process. So we may have to wait until this end to 2024 to begin all of that. I, I, I don't know if, if we're going to start uh, in the next month when we move in right over here. So that being said, uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for all of, all of y'all that have subscribed and um, that care to see with what is going on and, and being a part of our family and this adventure that uh, my wife and I and our kids are on. Um, we, I just, this is just incredible, you know, it's, uh, but not without sacrifice. And, uh, and I'm talking about sacrifice to give up a lifestyle and to do something like, you know, I mean, a comfortable lifestyle to go this route. This, this is still going to be comfortable. I mean, it's a beautiful home and everything, but it has been a sacrifice for us to have to sell our home that we thought was going to be our forever home and to sort of downsize in a sense and to go this route. But, but to be able to have a legacy to give to our children and hopefully to their children, that's what it's all about. And so all I, all I can say is just thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, to being a part of the Sparks Family Homestead. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, I, you know, I'm not a professional photographer or uh, YouTuber or anything of that nature, but I'm just being down to earth. And because I am in my current age bracket, I'm going to try to relate to a lot of people uh, that uh, are thinking that they're just too old to try to do something like this. You're not. You are not. 
and all things are possible, you know, and sometimes you just have to step out and just believe. And um, that's what we've done. And uh, we have not ever been disappointed. <laughs> okay, that's it. Take care and God bless. And we'll see you on the next one. Okay, bye-bye. Just wanted to show y'all where I was sitting when I was uh, just doing that sit-down talk here on our property. And there is the forest that I'm sitting right next to. I can hear the stream, the water in the stream.